So I brought in the chart again, although I'm not going to uh, show it to the screen. Uh, this week we've been starting a new series based on the koshas. The koshas are the layers of our being. Um, I was showing you guys a depiction of, and if you want to look at it over here, a person sitting in meditation, and it looks like a target in their chest. Um, it doesn't mean it's isolated to their chest. It's just a diagram that basically is showing the layers of our being. And that dot in the center represents the soul. So the layers of our being are what we're going to talk about for the next five weeks. Um, this one was the first week, which was the outermost layer, which is the physical body. What can be seen, what can be touched, uh, what's more tangible, what is part of this 3D reality. So it's the skin, it's the flesh, it's the bones, it's the tissues, it's all the stuff on the insides that's physical. Here's Betsy. Hi. Come on in. in. All good. And then we're not going to be as physical in our practice today um, like we were on Monday. Monday, we did a lot of fluidity type movements where we were entering and exiting the poses on the in breath and the out breath. And so there was a lot of repetitious movement. I was sore, you guys. I was so sore from that repetitious movement um, that I thought today with it being the new moon, uh, we would be a little bit more on the restorative side of things today. New moon, the energy is generally lower. Uh, new moon represents new beginnings. So if you haven't been planting new seeds for manifestation, this might be a good class for you to lounge and kind of daydreaming a little bit and see what you can conjure up on your wish list that you want to manifest for yourself. Or maybe just go into that uh, place in your imagination where you're envisioning what you would want the world to be like. Not the way it is now with this discord and disruption and chaos, but where do we see the world going? What result do you want to see coming about? Uh, whether that's more peace or more unconditional love or more abundance for all. Uh, but stay in that kind of positive mindset because this day is about the new energies coming in and being supportive of that. It is in Pisces. Pisces is a water element. With it being a water element, I thought we could work a little bit into the hips today since that correlates back to the element of water. Uh, Pisces is represented by a fish. Um, so we'll do a restorative fish pose today as well. And Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, and Neptune was the Roman god of the seas, the Roman god of water. So again, we have this kind of double water element showing up with the new moon. And there's also a lot of triads, what they call stallions, in the astrology charts right now, where three planets are kind of lumped together and another three planets are kind of lumped together. And when I was listening to a podcast about that this morning, it was saying threes are actually a really good number because it represents mind, body, spirit. It represents mother, father, child. It kind of represents more of a unit of cooperation and it's empowering each other to move forward. Uh, they say this particular new moon in Pisces is going to give us a glimpse of what we'll be seeing starting up in April. Uh, specifically more around April the 12th. Um, there's a big spiritual uh, alignment happening in the stars in April that should be affecting the whole world. So we'll just wait and see what that is. Um, let's take our first position. Our first position, we're going to line up the blocks. Um, two inches apart from each other. We're going to recline down to the back with the feet stacked on top of the blocks. And the hands are going to rest to the belly. So make sure it's comfortable where you're positioning your feet, whether that's ahead or just below the knees. Notice how that elongates the tailbone towards your heels and somewhat flattens the low back. 
As your hands rest on the abdomen, take a moment to put your attention into your back body, feeling the ground supporting you. Checking in, especially with your head and your neck. If you feel like you need any additional support here, feel free to bring a blanket underneath. Ensure that your shoulders have a sense of softness, that your upper back feels pretty broad, your elbows fanned out. And then notice the movement under your hands. Feel the belly ballooning up into the hands as you breathe in. Feel it deflate away as you breathe out. And then supply a little bit more air into your lungs. Even though the breath is often on autopilot, we do have the capacity to take ownership of the breath, to be able to deepen the breath. And this is one of the most important lessons that we learn in yoga. Maybe closing the eyes and harnessing the breath is your way of calming yourself down. Maybe it's the quick track to finding some inner peace. And if that's the case, you may want to rely on this technique in each pose that we take. Let's go ahead and take the left ankle and cross it over the right knee or thigh. And with your ankle propped here, just check in with your left hip. a more restorative way to approach the half pigeon for figure four. If you want to try something a little different, you can take your right hand to the top of the left foot and you're welcome to slide that foot down the thigh towards the hip crease. Doesn't have to go all the way towards the crease, just in that direction. If you find that's too much flexion for the knee, please slide the foot back up. What's a variation of this pose that helps to open this up for a half lotus? Be as gentle as you need to be with your body. Protecting your body so that you don't go too far or do too much. Have your body positioned where it feels just right. Then you can turn your awareness back to your breath.
muscles begin to tense or tremble, slide the foot higher towards the knee. Six more breaths. And then go ahead and slide the left foot down to the block. Pick up the right foot, crossing the ankle over the near thigh bone. Just being here initially. Staying pretty relaxed in your approach. And if you want to test the waters here, the left hand can move to the top of the right foot and you can attempt to slide it down. Doesn't have to go all the way to half lotus, but just in that general direction. And if that becomes too much, or if your muscles begin to tense or quiver, please slide it back up. Your mind wants to wander. Make sure that you are aligning to the thoughts it takes you to. Remember, this is a good time to plant some positive seeds of thought for new beginnings, for new growth, for new potential, for new things to arise. I mentioned Neptune playing a part right now. The energy we're receiving, Neptune's energy also has a way of spreading things. Neptune is known for releasing the veil so that you can see very clearly where you've been lied to or what's become deceitful. bring this back into the coaches. If we were to only focus on our physical appearance, that is just a veil of illusion. 
because we are not our looks. We are not our appearance. We are not our age. We are not our race. We are not our age. We are not even our gender. There's so much more than that. But since we're being more restorative, continue to dive into the other layers, even though we may not be discussing the other layers. What do you notice within yourself? Six more breaths. Your six, you can let the right foot slide up and slip away. Use your feet to pick up one block. Draw the knees in towards your upper body and use one of your hands to get the block from the feet and then drop the feet down to the sticky mat. When you have the block in hand, press out through the soles of the feet, start to lift, thighs, hips, abdomen, chest. Take the block underneath your sacral, that base bone at your low back, and then let your hands fan off to the sides. Palms are going to spin open. Eyes are still closed. Now opening the front of the hips, elevating the hips. So we have an inversion. You may feel a stretch across your lower abdomen. You may feel that additional lift in the center point of your chest. Perhaps more traction in your neck. So even though it's a restorative position, notice what you're receiving here. Oftentimes we're unconsciously trying to shield the heart. But imagine taking that armor down. Let your heart be free to blossom. Inhale, let's lift the left leg skyward. And let's rotate the ankle several times, one direction. Several times the other. And now neutralize the foot. Hold it here for six breaths.
will be n of six to sigma five. Inhale, let's lift the right leg. Rotate the ankle around and around. After going several times one way, reverse it. And now neutralize the foot, keep the leg suspended, and hold for six breaths. Once you release that foot, tuck and lift away from the block. Slowly roll down to the ground. Roll over to one side of your body. Press down through one hand and slowly come up. <coughs> we're going to have the block set up the way we were when we initially rolled to the floor. We're going to sit back towards our heels, and the hands are now going to be placed on the blocks. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide them out, and the head will just kind of hover. Ears in line with the upper arm bone. Traction through the arms, creating more traction through the spine. And if the blocks are too close together, you're going to feel the shoulder blades kind of uh, cinching in towards your spine. And you're welcome to fan the blocks a little farther away or externally rotate the upper arm bone. Take six more breaths. Your six, lift the head. You're sliding the blocks closer together and closer towards your own body. Long enough so that you can walk the elbows now to stack on top of the blocks. Palms together to prayer, and then you're bowing your head back in between. Legs will stretch out the side lats. We feel this even working into the pits of the arms. Good way to reduce any toxic buildup here. Slow, deep, mindful breaths. And take six more. Sit. Lift the head, move the blocks 
forward of your mat. Station your hands shoulder distance apart, rocking up the hands and knees. And we're going to launch into downward facing dog. Now let's open up the back side of the legs before we come back into the hips. So walk your hands back towards your toes. Your knees can have a soft bend. And then once you come into an Uttanasana or a dangling type position, the weight is more in your feet. The hands can flip upside down. And just let go of your neck. Hold for six more breaths. Perhaps counting the breath is a method that works for you to find your calm, peaceful place within. Round the six, walk the hands back out long enough just to still down to your knees for table. The bolster is going to come in now. When the bolster is set up sideways in front of you, we're bringing the left shin around in front of it. And we're going to even out the hips once we're stacked here. And the blocks are going to be used in order to bring the floor to us to make this a more restorative version of kitchen, not as deep. <laughs> Are you struggling? Uh, I can't figure it out. I'm just not bending. If you just bring your right hip over towards bed and then slide your knee a little bit more towards the bathroom door, like send your knee more that way. So, what's happening is you're, you're flopping here. Yeah. So if you use your arms to bring your right hip over and to slide your left knee uh, towards that back of the door a little bit, then you can be like kind of straight up this way. I wonder if it'd be easier to actually get into pigeon and pull up and slide it under. Absolutely, you can do that. Be yeah, that would work better for you, yeah. Do you want me to help you keep sliding mm -hmm. under? I think so. <laughs> I just don't know if I'm that bendy. I thought I was, but I didn't know. There. That's it. Yeah, we're going to help you with the other side, Thank too. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. And then I would stack the arms on top. Yeah. Also rest in prayer hands like this. If you need support for your head. You're still feeding the sensation into this area, but it's not as intense as doing it solo on our own.
potential working with the hips and it correlates back to the water element. Notice whatever thoughts are being fed through your mind, whatever feelings are coming up from your heart. Know that you're opening up the floodgates here. And the water is like the irrigation system. And those are the seeds you're planting. So be wise in your choices on which thoughts and feelings you want to give more life to. Hold for six more breaths. And we back the way. And we're going to come out and take the right leg over. So you may just want to do like a half lunge and then plank your toe that foot to the other side. The knee doesn't point straight ahead, it kind of points off to the side. That's it. So level out the hips. So you got it this time. Yeah. And we'll pinch over and hold. That's a great one. Yeah, the deer one. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
hold for 60 more. Use your hand to help. Step back over the bolster. And we are going to use the bolster for the next position. So for the next position, we're actually going to take the right shin in front of us. And then the left foot alongside the right hip. The bolster is going to come beside the right hip. And once you have, well, yeah, you have it right. Yeah. Just follow Betsy. She's got it correct. And then as you lift up your chest, you're going to wind your way around into that twist. And you can do a couple of different things. One way is you could just prop on top. If your body allows, you can come on down to your right cheek. This is a variation of the Wheel of Life twist. Let this position give you some time to rest and restore. To rest and renew. We talked earlier this week with the physical body, it is important to exercise, but it's also important to be able to manage your relaxation. It's important to regulate our sleep as well as our diet. In order to maintain proper health for the physical body. These layers have influence over each other. Without talking about the other layers, just know that this layer being tended to properly is going to also help to maintain and nurture the other layers. If we maintain awareness and nurture the other layers, they will also help with this layer, the Nanamaya Kosha, the physical body.
Slide your hands closer. So we're going to swap positions. I'm going to go the same direction you are. So I don't need you. Your left shin's out in the front. Your right knee bends, but alongside the hip. The bolsters beside your left. Then you elongate the spine, twist to the side, and then determine if you want to be stacked on top or is it possible to spill all the way down? Resting on your left cheek, keep it gentle. Even though we're talking about the surface layer today, go below the surface. Dive down into the innermost chamber of your heart, towards the deepest part of your mind.
to glide your hands in slowly and out. And let's position ourselves for the final pose today. I'm going to give you a choice. The one choice would be restorative fish with a bolster. And if your low back feels achy, you can sit on a blanket. If it's too much for your neck, you can rest your head on a blanket. And the other option would be to use blocks, one on its tall height, one on its middle height, where the middle one supports your ribs, your mid back, and the taller one supports the head. You can play around with those two options and see what's better. If you need extra blanket or anything, just let me know. Can't quit, can't quite get the blocks just right. Let me know. And I can walk around to assist so that you can find your comfort level. We've been listening to some chakra meditation music. And I just put it on the one for the heart.
six more breaths. of your six, you can slowly begin your exit out of the pose you chose. Taking your time. Eventually coming up for see. No rush. your hands together to prayer close out this practice with the seal Let's seal the intention to continue to nurture ourselves throughout the days but also to be aware this is an important time to remember the tools and techniques that help us to drop back into that space of calm inner peace regardless of what's happening on the outside Try to put this into practice daily. The light of me honors a vow to the beautiful light of each of you. Thank you guys so much for 